Okie doke. Lesson 35 is the mean value theorem. So, in theory, you have already seen the video that explains the theorem. You have already seen Rolle's theorem. You have already confirmed that. You have already talked about assumptions. You have already seen the main result and the proof of the main result. You have already seen an example. And in theory, you have already done the questions that I am about to do uh, because they are on the worksheet that is uploaded in Canvas. If you have not yet done that worksheet, hit the pause button, do nothing else, go and work those questions, then come back, hit the play button, and watch the solutions. Okay, so I'm assuming everybody still listening has already worked through the questions on their own. Uh, find the value of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says that F prime of C is F of B minus F of A over B minus A. It's this part that we'll work out first. Uh, F of 3 minus f of 0 over 3 minus 0. Uh, so you can substitute 3 in, and you can substitute 0 in, and any calculator is going to tell you that that's 6. So now what do we do? What is equal to 6? f prime of c is equal to 6. So what's f prime of c? Well, f prime is 3x squared minus 3, nothing to do there. So we solve this. If we solve this, any values of C that solve this and that lie on that interval are the ones we're looking for. So kick the 3 over, kick the 3 over. So C is, now let's be careful. There are two square roots of 3, but we only care about the positive square root of 3. C is the square root of 3. We're supposed to give that to three decimal places, and that's 1.732. This is the sort of thing that you need to know, <clears throat> pardon me, that you need to know how to crank out. We know what the mean value theorem says. We can find the slope of the secant. We set the derivative equal to the slope of the secant, and we solve. That's what's going on here. Uh, what are we looking for here? We're looking for the value of C, value or values of C, for which G prime of C is G of B minus G of A over B minus A. In this case, A is 0 and B is 4. So we're looking for G of 4 minus G of 0 over 4 minus 0. And you can substitute 4, and you can substitute 0, and you get sine of 4 plus 4 over 4. What is that? Well, uh, I got a calculator that does this for me. So you got sine of 4 plus 4 over 4. That's approximately 0 0.81079. 0 0.81079. So what do we do? We set the derivative equal to that. Because this is the that part. We need the g prime of c. What's g prime of c? Well, the derivative is cosine x plus 1. So we solve this. And if we, now there's a bunch of ways to solve this. You can put this in y1, this in y2, and see where they cross on that interval. Uh, you can kick the 1 over. Uh, that's negative 0.189201, and then undo the cosine. Uh, either way, no matter how you slice it, the value of C on the interval that solves this is about 1.761. 
what are the important things to remember here? We set the derivative equal to the slope of the secant line. The slope of the secant line is figured out by using function values at both ends of the interval. And then the rest is a calculator problem. Like this is calculus, this is part of the calculus, this is a calculator problem. So this is just knowing how to use your machine. Uh, the third question was by far the most complicated. Uh, we're looking to find the value of C for which H prime of C is H of B minus H of A over B minus A. And so in this case, uh, we're looking for H of 3 minus H of 1 over 3 minus 1. So you can substitute in, uh, you substitute the 3 you substitute the 1 over 3 minus 1. Well, what is that? That's a good question. So, cosine 3, oh, oh, plus 9 quantity squared minus cosine 1 plus 1 quantity squared divided by 2. My calculator is in radian mode. Hopefully yours is 2. And so this is 30.8938, right? Right, 30.89. Three, eight. So what do we do? What do we set equal to 30.8938? Well, we set the derivative equal to that. How do you find the derivative? Well, it's something squared, so we do 2 times the something to the first times the derivative of that something. And the derivative of that something is negative sine plus 2 times the variable, right? So then this is a calculator problem. You're, you're taking the, I mean, if I'm advising and I recognize that I am advising, I think the way to do this is to get one side equal to zero and then you graph this as y1 with x's in place of c's and then you figure out where a root is. And that turns out to be at 2.207. So that's a calculator question. Um, and you can expect to use a calculator. You can expect to be required to use a calculator. In fact, um, if you're watching this during the coronavirus crisis, then all of our quizzes henceforth are calculator active uh, because, I mean, well, you're on your own. so. Sure. Okay. Uh, so that's enough about the mean value theorem. Uh, there's going to be another video coming that's going to take a look at some things that are super important because of the mean value theorem, but they set up all the work that we're going to do next week. So very well. Uh, go practice.